So good morning, everybody. Happy that you're here. <laughs> so, the title of uh, the Open uh, Friday Meditation today is Invisible Winds. Winds? Like wind? Yeah, like okay. wind. The Invisible Wind. Which is a quite a beautiful title, I think. And mm. it's so true. You, you cannot see the wind. The only thing what we notice of the wind is its effects. It's when the wind goes around the house and we can hear the wind kind of, you know, make this sound, this whistle. We can feel the wind on our skin. We can hear the effect of the wind in the trees. But the wind itself we don't notice. It's like invisible, we cannot see. We cannot notice as long as it not has an impact. So, this is very, very much connected with our perception and how we perceive the world around ourselves. It's very much the same with light. Light itself you don't notice. What you see is the reflection of light. So what we perceive is an effect, is a reflection of something. When we look to our thoughts and how our thought structure is working, then what we see, it's kind of built very much according to trying to place things in um, a structure we recognize. Otherwise, we couldn't do anything with it. The same is with our feelings or experiences. In the moment we have an experience, we place it in a way, or we only able to experience, we place it into a structure of memory. So most of the impressions we get only kind of move in when it has an impact on our memory. And we are a little bit shocked when we have an experience which is totally new. And this is really interesting. Sometimes we have an experience which is totally new. And we are a little bit shocked and we don't know how to place it. And then the mind starts to work, kind of, to try to find a way to place it into a structure we know to give it a name, to kind of put it into a box. And at the same time, when you look to what we experience, this experience is always an effect of something else. So this is really kind of worthwhile to think about. <coughs> it's really worthwhile to think about because so much what we do is we identify with our thoughts. We identify with the person we build in our thoughts. And often the person we build in, the, in our thoughts is the person we basically <coughs> want to be not the person we are, but the person we want to be. This is who I am. And the person we are, there's parts we want to get rid of. It's better not to, 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 to have this. And then the question is again, are we really this person? Is this what we are? Are we the person we want to be? And then, when we experience something, we kind of edit, and that's just moving through uh, memory, to the person. When you experience you're in deep shit, <laughs> or you experience fear, or you experience rage, or you experience envy, or you experience jealousy, 
or insecurity or all those things we rather don't want. We immediately place it in the person. We place it in the person and then we start to judge. Oh, this is really not good. I'm in deep shit. <coughs> this I don't want. This I should work on myself. I really should lift this. If I'm so insecure, I cannot be a good person. I will not be able to manage in the world, in society. I'm so fearful, I'm not able to, to manage with this fear. So either this fear has to disappear, or I should work on it, transform it, and kind of get free of it. So fear in itself, when we look to it, is a reflection of something. It's always a reflection. A reflection of a fright, an experience, something which is happening, inside or outside. But it's a reflection. It's a reaction on. So, what we do is kind of the same we do with the person. We, ha we have a spider and we are fearful for the spider. So the spider is not fear. It's the imprint of the spider which makes us fearful. It's an effect. <coughs> but we act as if the spider is fear is representing fear. This is fear. A spider is fear. And then we come with the truth. And the truth is kind of made by our mind, is kind of, you know, ex an explanation, a thesis, a theory why spiders are fearful. And we're very creative in it. And this is representing a spider for us. You know, when you ask the spider, do you recognize yourself in this, the spider would say no. This has nothing to do with the spider anymore. It's what we create around the spider. When you look to this in the depth, it's a little bit kind of fearful maybe. Because, you know, we so tend to trust on our experiences, our impressions, our conclusions, the person we are. That's what we kind of lean on, the structure we build as a reality inside ourselves. But then when you really look at this reality, it's basically all based on effects and conclusions built on effects. This is basically how we try to place the unknown universe into a known reality. And the more we place the unknown universe into a known reality as an absolute, this is how it is. The more something starts to stagnate, We come to a position where we say we know it all, we've done it, you know, I experienced everything, I reached my goal. And again, you know, 
it seems that at one hand we really need to organize to understand we really need to use our mind we need probably to build a person <coughs> on the other hand you know when you look at the person which is an effect of our past of our genes of our parents of everything we went through it's an effect We are built by memory, we are built by history. Once a spider gave you a fright, and now you don't like spiders. And this is uh, part of your personality. I'm Bart, I don't like spiders. It's effects. So this whole person we built is an effect of our history. And this person, kind of, basically when you look to it, what we identify with, it, if it's built, crystallized, out, it's like a thing, it's not alive, it's hardly alive. If you reached your goal and everything is perfect and you know about everything, it's like being dead. There is no movement forward anymore. All the effects are covered and that's reality, that's life. You, you recognize? This is often what we tend to move through. Towards. This kind of perfection. So, this per perfection has nothing to do with life itself. It has nothing to do with <coughs> the core of life, it's based on facts. We think we're in control when we know that the effects of what life kind of brought towards us, that the knowledge of the effects helps us to how to react or how to uh, experience life itself. That's perfection. We know how to react. Because we've seen it already. We know it already. But then, when you look to life itself, which we cannot see, we can only see its effects. Life itself, maybe, is changing all the time. Maybe every minute is unique. Every second is unique. Every moment is unique. So when we kind of move down more into experience and less from the mind, because mind is more strongly as experience, and the mind is kind of categorizing, saying, okay, I know this, I know this, I know this, even before it comes in. Know this, done this. Know this already. In experience, basically, we let in things a little bit more, but exactly the same is happening. It's effects. I experience this. I know this experience. I know what bliss is. Let's go back to the bliss I know. Or hold on to the bliss I know. Or hold on to the depression I know. I know this depression. This I know. I know this fear. This I know. So it's much more easy to hold on to a fear we know as to move into the things we don't know. The things we cannot perceive. It's so often that we are in a pattern where we recreate the fears we know because the sudden fear, the fear which is happening at once, is much more e difficult to contain. So if we have an issue with fear, it's really helpful to kind of build the known field fears, to feed them. you recognize what I'm talking about?
So we build a lot of patterns inside ourselves that kind of recreate what we know. And also we are demanding it from each other. It's very difficult to have a friend who any moment is different. You don't know what he wants to drink, you don't know what he wants to do, you don't know what uh, he wants to go through, how he relate to things. <coughs> this, is, this, is, this is difficult. It's much more easy to relate to somebody you know the basic structure of. This she likes, this she wants, this will surprise her. And I'm not saying it's wrong, but I want to kind of show you that, you know, basically also that is connected with effects. You reached out with somebody, somebody was happy, that had a good effect. So if you want to make the person happy, you will do the same thing again, you will repeat it, hold on to it. She likes a coffee in the morning, so every morning we bring her coffee. It would be very complicated if she wants one morning coffee, one morning vodka, or the other morning tea. <laughs> The third one in whiskey, uh, orange <coughs> juice. <laughs> morning you bring her everything, she doesn't want anything. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing to this morning. Thank you. Very sweet. So there's nothing wrong with it. It's the way we give structure to our lives. It's the way we get, give structure to the reality. But so often there is a confusion in us, us that the way we give structure to the reality becomes the reality. The way we give structure to our lives becomes our lives. The sounds of the wind, which is the effect of the wind, becomes the wind. The wind we feel on our skin is the wind. That's not the wind. It's not the source. It's not the real movement of air. It's the effect on us. So when we confuse this, <coughs> we basically get lost into the effects. So always, when the wind is blowing, you hear the sound around the house. This is the wind, the whistle. Always, when I see a spider, I'll be fearful. Always, when somebody is unfriendly towards me, I get angry. Always, when I suspect that somebody will reject me, I get fearful. <coughs> it's all effects. So what would happen if we would let go of this effect, if we would let go of this security inside ourselves. What would happen? What do you think, Ariel? fun but yeah. you know but then if you let go of all of that and let go of the effects and kind of move into the unknown and the unperceivable because the wind itself we cannot perceive 
So maybe we get crazy. Or maybe we'll die. That also could happen. But this is often the fears when we let go of this structure we build as a reality is what comes forward is the fear of getting crazy and the fear to die. And in no way I'm saying get rid of the person you are, get rid of the structure you build. Getting rid is another structure, don't get rid of it. Don't get rid of the person. But just drop it now and then. Drop the person. It's not what you are, it's just a structure which is helpful to manage in daily life, to organize, to give form. This is how we give form, through the person. But is this what you are? Is this whole big bag of, <coughs> of structures, of uh, uh, beliefs of uh, forms we learn from other people, our parents, teachers, friends, movies, television. Is this what we are? It's tools. It's a big, big, big toolbox. And there's nothing wrong with the tool big box. So what would happen if you drop it? If you just let it go for a few moments? Would it get lost? Would the, maybe a thief would come and take it away from you? No toolbox, you would be a baby again. So basically what would happen is that you can pick it up again at any moment. So if you drop it and you pick it up and you drop it and you pick it up, you drop it and you pick it up. <coughs> what would happen? We would be able to compare between the two situations and understand better the two situations if we are going from one to the other. we become more aware or that we are not the toolbox and we become aware that something else is there a side of the toolbox which still exists a side of the toolbox which still exists and maybe what's there we could drop that as well Maybe that's not really what we are either. So it starts a whole journey inside. So let's go into the meditation. So I'd like us to start to connect with the ID. And from the ID we move down <coughs> to the point of silence. It's just in the middle of here, between the brows. And you can move a little bit inside it. And until you kind of reach a place where it's more silent. If you move a little bit inside it, there is a place which is more silent. And from this place, I like you just to look at any activity. Any activity which is there in thoughts. Just try to look at it. If a thought comes up, try to witness it.
and when there is some thought which gets stuck or kind of comes forward more strongly try to just gently allow it to let it go then I'd like you to move to the heart and try to move a little bit inside the heart so if you move a little bit inside the heart a little bit to the left or to the right there is a place which feels very 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 comfortable which is called the secret garden and then again from this place I'd like you to stay there for some time and just kind of experience whatever is there to experience and then I'd like, like you to look to try to observe your experiences. You're saying the heart, <coughs> you're talking about yeah. center, but yeah. then you're saying also to the left and also to the now right. Now you go inside and then a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. It's not like 20 meters to the left okay. or 20 meters. Uh, it's just kind of you have to, to look for it. If you go into the heart like this, like 10 centimeters, between 5 and 10 centimeters, there is a place a little bit to the left or to the right for those who are not used to it, which is kind of pleasant to be. You will feel immediately, ah, this is a kind of homecoming. And the same feelings, whatever feelings or emotions are coming forward, you know, just try to observe them. Let them be. And if you get stuck to something, just let, try to let it go. Gently kind of drop it. Let it fall down or let it go. And just see what's happen happening then. And then we move to the pelvic. And again in the pelvic, I'd like you to connect with the coccyx. And try to connect with emptiness and the perception through emptiness. Which if you move into the space inside the coccyx, it's quite easy to connect with emptiness, with the whole space of emptiness. And again, <coughs> try to perceive what's coming forward as forms, as images. And again, when you have a feeling that you get kind of, you know, attached to a form, try to release it very softly. Just let it go. Let it move. Let it move further. And then I'd like you to kind of move down to the ground and a little bit sink a little bit into the ground or a lot into the ground just let yourself sink into the ground and in sinking into the ground try to leave the person just let go of the person <laughs>